Yeah, Gary, thanks so much. And, and you said it. I mean, he grew up a not just a Mets fan, but as you can tell, a diehard Mets fan. And David, once again, congratulations. Um, was there a moment where, where it did hit you on a deeper level that, again, now you were that rare fan that gets to actually be the one running the franchise that you love? Yeah, I think um, when, when the news leaked a couple of weeks ago, when it became public, um, and just the amount of outreach I got from friends and family here in New York, people who were, were so excited um, for me, but also for the Mets. Um, uh, and, and so I think that's when this really began to, to hit me that you know, this, this is happening. I'm going home um, and, and I get to help lead the New York Mets. All right. So you, I mean, you let it rip that you snuck in to Shea Stadium back in the day. Um, who was, who was your guy? Who was the, the, the player? What was the team that, you know, you really fell in love with when you were growing up? So obviously early mid nineties, um, we, we tried, but there wasn't a whole lot to, to, to cheer about. Um, you know, the late nineties Mets were, were really my teams. Um, and I, I remember the Piazza trade. I was here, uh, or I was at Shea for his first game as a Met, um, and, and going through those, those 98, 99, 2000 seasons, um, you know, the 2001 season and, and what, uh, that September meant to the city. Um, and some of the games at Shea during that, that period. Um, I, I think those were the teams that solidified um, the Mets and, and me. And, um, and, and I remember a lot of those games and moments at Shea with my family and friends during those runs. So you're saying Todd Zeal. Todd Zeal Todd, is the guy, There right? you go. A absolutely. <laughs> Todd, Todd Zeal, no question. Um, you know, but th there, were, there were those teams, um, we think about like the 99-2000 the teams and um, the different components of those teams, the different players who contributed in each year. Mm -hmm. And that, that is something I actually take with me as I think about building rosters. And, and you realize that the team that you think is going to be the team at the outside of spring training or opening day isn't always the team that helps you win games in September. Um, and I think both those teams proved that. Both those teams had um, players who emerged midseason who ended up playing very key parts in what were very successful years. When you talk about your team building philosophy, you're obviously someone that knows the New York market is different, right? And there's more scrutiny, whether it's the media, whether it's the fan base. How much when you're evaluating players, thinking about the guys to bring in, do you think about not just the skill set, but the mental toughness to deal with, you know, inevitable differences here than, than you would have to deal with in other places. Yeah, this is, this is a different market. It's a different animal. And players who play here will, will tell you that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and clearly some players can handle that a little bit better than others. Players who haven't played here before, um, it can be a little tougher to tell. Mm -hmm. and, and you do your best um, to figure out whether uh, they've had success in other big markets, um, whether they seem to have performed well in, in other high intensity, high pressure environments. Um, but you'll never know. And, and certainly a lot of really talented players have come here and, and it's taken a year or so to make that adjustment. We've all seen that um, on both sides of the river here. So uh, yeah, I, I understand that. Um, it's something that we're gonna have to take into account. It's also something we're not gonna get right all the time. We hear the word or the phrase sustained success constantly. Yeah. You brought it up a couple of times. Steve has talked about that since day one uh, of you know taking over this franchise. What are the keys to doing that? How do you go about, I know it's not, you know, there's no perfect formula, yeah. but, but what are the main tenets of building a sustainable franchise? So the, clearly the foundation is we have to produce our own talent mm -hmm. pipeline consistently. Mm -hmm. um, we can't build uh, a team exclusively f through free agency. Um, it's really tough to do that and have success, uh, regardless of the resources you have. Um, and you really can't do it even predominantly through free agency. So we will have to develop a system here. Um, and it goes back to our scouting department um, and, and bringing in players and then our coaches in the minor leagues, developing those players to the best of our ability. Um, that consistently replenishes our major league team. We are fortunate we have the ability to supplement that group. Um, and when appropriate, we can supplement it in a, in a really aggressive manner. Um, but the foundation for any successful organization starts in what you're, you're bringing in and developing yourself. So in the conversations you've had with Steve Cohen, you know, he's made it clear to all of us that next year won't necessarily be about strictly winning a World Series again. It's about, again, building for the future and, and still being competitive. How do you, as now the head of baseball operations, balance that 
long-term goal with still trying to put a product on the field next year that, that has an opportunity to be successful? Yeah, so that, that's the, those are the key and difficult decisions that we're always going to face. And you face those decisions, um, frankly, regardless of the market you're in, where you're trying to balance near-term, long-term. It probably becomes a little bit more acute here in New York where there are the expectations to compete every single year. And we should be able to meet those expectations. Those are reasonable um, expectations for our fans to have of us. I have those expectations of us. Um, and so there is no magic formula. You do your best to evaluate every decision in terms of how it is going to impact us in 24 while not hamstringing us um, in the future. Um, because we know if we make ill-advised decisions that exclusively prioritize 24, we're going to pay for that down the road and it's going to set the franchise back in ways we don't want. David, you've talked about the wide net that you plan on casting when it comes to you know, choosing the next manager. Do you have a timetable in mind? Is there a, a moment in the offseason where you say we really, if not need to have a manager in place, we want to because of you know, presenting a full package to free agents, let's say, moving forward? Yeah, th there's not a moment. Um, I'm confident that by the time we get into those types of discussions in December, for example, we'll, we'll know who our manager is going to be. Um, but there's no defined moment. What, what, what's important for us is that we run a process that, that nets us the right person. Um, that's what I'm concerned about. Uh, if, if that is a short process, that's wonderful. And if it takes us longer, I'm fine with that too. Finally, David, what is the process now for you of learning the inner workings of this organization going under the hood, as you put it. Um, and how does this structure now work with you, with Billy Epler, who's been here, and, and everybody who's you know been at the top of this this baseball operations department for a year or two now? Yeah. So, so step one is I need to start meeting with people, yeah. um, and that's going to happen as soon as I go upstairs. Um, and meeting as groups, meeting as departments, meeting one on one, face to face, so that I can really understand um, who we have and 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 what we do well. Um, and where perhaps I can bring in um, some of my experience from elsewhere and my skill sets to help move us forward. So um, the, the first couple of weeks in these things are a lot of discussion, a lot of meeting, um, and then beginning to slowly really prepare for um, an off season, which is going to begin the minute the World Series ends. David Stearns, congratulations on, uh, on achieving a lifelong dream, and, and we look forward to many more conversations in the future. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, guys, uh, noted Todd Zeal fan, David Stearns, now running the Mets.